we want you to check our website and find out when we're going to be in your area for a miracle rally. Bring your friends, bring the sick, bring the hurting. Come and expect a touch from heaven. Believe me, you give to the poor, God will give to you. So he said, okay, okay, okay. So anyway, to make a long story short, next three days we just kept going and we emptied it all out. And, and so I preached there Sunday morning and, and, and Saturday night when we got back because we had the biggest crowd on Saturday because we had like a couple hundred out on the street Saturday. So we really wiped out his warehouse. And he said, Sister Joan, he said, you have done wiped out our warehouse of food. And I said, yep, isn't that neat? All those people got saved. <laughs> isn't that neat? All those people got blessed. Isn't it neat that all these people, you know, I said, they're even coming to your church because they started coming to church. And we had them actually, a lot of them came to Sunday, Sunday morning service. And anyway, Sunday morning came. And he came out, and, you know, he came out and comes into the prayer room to pray with me. And he says, Sister Joan, you're not going to believe what happened. I said, what, Pastor? He goes, somebody, somebody early this morning, I guess, slipped an envelope under the door of my office. And the note said, Pastor, we are so happy that the church is giving food to the needy. Here's a check for 7000 Fill your warehouse. You see, you cannot outgive God. You give to the poor, you give to the needy. But anyway, God was testing to see where their heart is. They're saying, well, 200 deniers of money. So they're thinking money, money, money instead of resources from on high. You see, they didn't know that Jesus could multiply and multiply. Now, Jesus is looking for you. I want you to hear me. Jesus is looking for you. Now, listen, this message is for you and you watching by TV. And so this is in verse 8. And one of the disciples, Andrew, Simon's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. Not even big ones. But what are they among so many? All right? Now I'm going to talk to you about this little lad. Now, how many of you know that um, children usually go places with their parents? Okay? And this lad is there without mama. You follow? It's very, very clear that you need to see that the lad is there without mama. So I'm going to use this as a Joan Pierce paraphrase, okay? So the little boy comes running home one day from school. Mama, 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 guess what, mama? There's a man named Jesus. He's doing miracles all over the country. I've heard from school that, that my friend's mother got healed and, and, and so-and-so's teacher got healed. And oh, mama, there's this man named Jesus and he's out, he's out in the country and everybody's going there. They're going there. They're going there. Mommy, I want to go hear him. I've heard so much. Mom, will you go with me? Will you go with me and hear about Jesus? Please, mom, will you pack a lunch? You and I, come on, mom. Come on, let's go and hear about Jesus. Get lost, kid. I don't want nothing to do with this, Jesus. Get out of my hair. His mama's going to drink. Mama's divorced. Get lost, kid. If you want to go hear about that, Jesus, you go hear about Jesus, but don't bug me. And if you want to go, stay gone for a while. Let me pack you a lunch. Now, come on. A little boy doesn't need... What? How many loaves of bread? Five loaves of bread. Five loaves. Not five pieces of bread, five loaves of bread and two small fish if he's just going to go for a day. You follow what I'm saying? He doesn't need five loaves of bread and two fish for a day. So she's saying, here, here's five loaves, here's two fish, get lost, go hear this Jesus, but don't bug me. Now just get out of here, get out of my hair so I can do what I want to do and sin, sin, sin and do whatever I want to do and get out of my way so I don't feel guilty. Doing it in front of you. You follow? But mama, but mama, because the boy's desperate. If I could just get my mom to Jesus, if I could just get my mom to Jesus, I know she'd be changed. Are you hearing me? When I was witnessing in New York City, Marty and I went and spent the summer in New York City, and we keep going to New York City, witnessing and witnessing and witnessing. I want to share a story that happened in New York City. When we were handing out flyers and we gave away groceries, we had big bags of groceries we were giving away, and we had shoes we were giving away, and we had clothes we were giving away, and we went to New York City and we went into the projects. We went, we went into the projects, big projects everywhere, handing out flyers to the children. Go tell your mom. Go tell your mom. I said, go tell your mom that we're giving away groceries over here. And some kid goes like this, and he swore at me. He's like four years old. He just cussed out a storm at me. I mean, language that, you know, you wouldn't expect out of a four-year-old. He said, 
What makes you think I have a mom, huh? My mom don't care about me. I haven't seen my mom. She took off. So who do you want me to tell about this food? I said, well, who's raising you? My grandma? Well, go tell your grandma that. Then I hand it, so I thought, well, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So I go to another couple of boys, and I say, hey, you little boys, why don't you go tell your dad? My dad is dead. My dad got stabbed. Oh, I'm sorry. I said, how about your dad? My dad's in prison. I said, oh. I said, well, how about you go telling your dad? He goes, which one? I have a new one every night. And so they're hardcore little kids. But you know what? When Marty, it was really cute. I'll tell a story about Marty. Marty had it all organized how we could give to the kids because not only do we give food to the grown-ups and stuff, we always have something for the children. We always have some toys for the children, prizes for the children's pop-up books. In fact, these pop-up books that you saw right here that I've got, those are like $13 pop-up books. We gave every single child pop-up books at our outreach last year, $6,000 worth of books. $6,000 worth of balloons and prizes and color crayons. But you know what? We just did it from our ministry. We, we tried to see if people would send in money, but they didn't. And you know, we said, we're just going to do it because we know that if we do it, God notices when you seek you first the kingdom of God.